So next in my series of the review I'm going to do on the Farm Innovators 4250 incubator is I'm going to take a look at the temperatures on the eggs. Now I'm a stickler for egg temperature and as I've learned from other people, um, part of the problem is there is a, um, <clears throat> a disparity between often the temperature that is showing on the display that comes with the incubator and the actual humidity and temperature that's going on inside the incubator. So I've also done quite a bit of research and I have found that the temperature of the shell itself of the egg is much more important than the air temperature. I've probably got in my the one where my duck eggs are the temperature of the air which I've got a little thermometer with the metal um, tip that goes down in there and you know inside the styrofoam and it's supposed to be taking the air temperature it says like 93.5 for the air temperature but when I do the eggs themselves they're they're about 99 to 100 now when I had the air temperature at 100 when I was laser uh, reading my eggs for temperature it was reading at 107 on some of them which may have been why some of them did not make it I don't know and there's there were some hot spots in in that one while they're at the new eggs were in and everything was getting stabilized and then everything seems to be good now but an incubator can have zones that are hot in one space um, actually on the farm innovators I've read people that had a real the first row the one that's closest to you can be a little bit cooler so what some people do to mitigate that is to rotate their eggs they open it up and they'll move the um, the back row to the front and then move all the other rows back so that you're getting um, enough warmth for all the eggs throughout the incubation. But one way to just check what's going on in your incubator is to take a laser thermometer. This is the one that I use, like 25 bucks on Amazon, and I'm gonna check the shell temperature, and then I will let you see what kind of results we're getting. I've actually also added Looks like my, my humidity's down. I put these little agrometer thermometer thingies in there. I'll put a link to that also. Um, that are going to double check. I'm finding that the humidity reads pretty accurately, but um, the temperature isn't quite right, and your temperature is crucial. Um, and again, we're going to check the shell temperature, not the air temperature. All right, first row, it's reading at about 95 degrees. That's a little cooler than I want. We'll go to the next row back, 96. Now it's saying 99. 99. So I'm getting about 99 for these. Now it's set to 100 degrees, which is exactly what I want. But that first row is a little cool, and one lady said that she kind of taped up the front of the incubator. Maybe there's a little bit of a gap in there. I don't know. That's a, I don't want to be taping stuff shut, but this is a really good incubator for keeping that temperature real stable. And um, except for the first row, and even that, I think they're probably going to be fine. But I have been rotating mine back so that there's an equal, you know, everybody gets um, an equal ration of, of, of being at the right temperature, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to candle a few eggs. I'm going to turn the light out for that and see if I can't show y'all what the development is. We should be able to see some babies in there. All right. Let's check this first row. This one does not look good. This is an egg from one of my older hens, so I'm not thinking that that one was... Had a real good chance anyway. This one's good. You can see I got the air pocket at the top. And I can see quite the developed baby. I think we're like on day 14 now. And you can see all the veins in there. Let's see this one. About the same as the other one where you can see there's a little space at the bottom for them to grow and then there's a little air pocket in, in the top. There's one where you can see more of the line of demarcation where the baby's growing and then if you put the ink on top you can see that. That air pocket, that's where the baby breathes. 
So I'm gonna candle the rest of these eggs and I'll let you know how many uh, ended up being viable and how many weren't. At this point, they're so filling the egg that it's really hard to see a lot of the vein work because they're so developed, you're just seeing baby. But um, if I find any that aren't developed, I'll report back on. These are my eggs from my chickens, so I know the rooster's doing his job. I got two roosters to about 27 hens, and they're doing their job. So uh, we'll see what my fertility rate ends up being. This is the first candling I've done because I've just been too busy. So I've candled my eggs, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that do not look viable. There's a couple I'm really not sure about, and I'm not willing to crack them up in case I'm wrong. There appears to be a certain level of development. I'm not sure if they're still alive or not because they're kind of they're floating in a way that just doesn't look like the other ones. But that'll become apparent over time. I've got this one older hen where none of her eggs are good, so I'll know for the future not to uh, even try to incubate some of hers. She's probably just past her prime. And then I've got three of these brown ones that must be a chicken that's real good at avoiding the rooster because there's just nothing developed in there at all. So I'm gonna do an egg topsy, and if there's anything interesting there, I will spare you the gore, but um, I'll report in the description how that went. If you want to see an egg top, see where I open up eggs, I'll show you that in my duck egg video, which I'll link at the end of this one. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, this is a very important part of the hatching process, so don't skip this. The stinky egg I had in my duck incubator would have exploded and destroyed the viability of all my other eggs. So you really do need to know what's developing in there and what is not. But I can tell you, I've actually rotated all of my eggs to the back because that front row of the Farm Innovators 4250 can be a little bit cooler. Doesn't mean they won't hatch, but just so that the other ones are all at 99 to 100 degrees, I'm going to rotate and just leave that front row open, which I don't think is a bad strategy because you're always going to have some that just don't develop. I think 100%. It's always what I shoot for, but I don't think it's practical to think that's actually going to happen. If you've ever actually had 100% Bravo, um, but having some that just aren't viable eggs to begin with, <laughs> yeah. my little helper, is is unreasonable. Um, but you definitely want to give them the best shot that that you can and do the best you can. And I am so excited to see how this hatch goes. I'm very pleased with the Farm Innovators one so far. It has all of the bells and whistles of the previous incubator that I reviewed without the design flaw. Um, of, I don't know, maybe I can just show you these here for the moment. The firmer one that I, entered, that I reviewed had all this circuitry in the bottom. So you have the eggs on top, the fan below, all the circuitry and the sensors, and then I went to clean it because after the chicks hatch, you know, all the goo falls to the bottom. And the babies poop while they're drying off. And you can't wash it without completely destroying it. So um, on this one, all of it's in the top. You know, when you put your top on, things might fly up a little bit as the chicks are uh, hatching out, but this stays clean for the most part. It's got all of what I loved about the previous one. It's got better temperature control. The other one, the top got kind of warped and it got where it wouldn't stay closed. And then there was a really cool spot on one side and it just, just a mess. So. You can, you can feel good about this one. It's got the styrofoam, um, but it's got the big window. And, uh, the styrofoam, I'm starting to realize, just the plain old plastic one just wasn't holding in the heat. And the edges didn't seal. And there were just so many problems uh, with the Asian is the one that I reviewed. And, um, but this one's a lot better, so I can recommend this. But we'll see how the hatches go. We'll see if, it, if the results, if the proof's in the pudding, and I'll let you know how that goes.